Hey folks, how you doing? Senior Pastor of the Connected Christian Church here, Pastor Derek Galloway. I'm so excited because this Sunday coming up, September the 19th at 10 a.m. is National Back to Church Sunday, but we want to call it a homecoming, y'all. It's been a tough year. We've endured the pandemic. We've had some losses. We've had some gains, but we want to gain our relationship with Christ Jesus. We're inviting you. If you have not been to the Connected Christian Church, why don't you come out for the first time? If you haven't been in a while, why don't you revisit and see what's different? Our service time is 10 a.m. on Sunday morning. We have live classes at 9 a.m. taught by our instructors that are really dedicated to helping you live life in full excellence. Come through, enjoy your 75 minutes, and guess what? We'll be happy to receive you. We'll see you at 10 a.m. on September 19th for National Back to Church Sunday. It's a homecoming, y'all. We'll see you soon. Hey, good morning. It's 7 a.m. It's time for your 15-minute fill-up. I am your host on this morning, Senior Pastor Derek Galloway. I'm the Senior Pastor of the Connected Christian Church located at 107 East Beard between State and Salina in the beautiful city of Syracuse. I want to thank you again for joining with us this morning and starting your day with some positivity, with a little bit of faith, and some way to get your day going the right way. Before we go any further, let's go before God's throne of grace and prayer. Gracious Father, we thank you this morning for life, for health, for strength, for keeping us as we slept in slumber or whatever activities we may have been in. God, last night was not our last night, and for that we say thank you. Now, Father, I ask that you allow our hearts, minds, and ears to be open and receptive and ready to receive what you have for us today. Father, we honor you because you alone have a name that is above every other name. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so I want to get into the lesson on this morning. We're going to be talking from Psalms 85 and 2, New Living Translation. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and grab it, get you a notebook so we can begin to take notes and we'll begin to work from there. I'm going to go ahead and display this for you now. It says, Thou hast forgiven the iniquity of thy people, and thou hast covered all of their sins. Selah. Understand that when you are operating in a position to where you have unforgiveness in your heart, you have unforgiveness in your mind and unforgiveness in your spirit, a lot of times you find yourself being bound by that unforgiveness. Having unforgiveness and, and holding people responsible for things that they may not have known they've even done is like drinking poison and waiting for the other person to die. I said on Sunday that it would be like me or, or, or you 
drinking a bottle of poison, iocane powder or whatever it is, and just waiting and looking. Is he gone yet? Is he gone? It sounds foolish, right? But that's what the purpose of harboring unforgiveness sounds like to God. If you are sitting there with unforgiveness in your heart, then you're in a position where you are unable to really attach yourself to the blessings of God. We talked yesterday about your faith, not having faith preventing you from attaching to the blessings of God. Unforgiveness is another hang up or precursor to being separated from the goodness of the Lord. And I don't want you to be separated from the goodness of the Lord. I want you to have everything that God wants for you, I want for you as well. You can't be in a position to where you know that you have access, but you would rather hold on to this grudge or this issue or this problem or this situation and wait for that situation to, to blow over when in all honesty, you're called to forgive. You're called to forgive just as Christ was called to forgive because even on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them because they know not what they do. I'm asking you to forgive those individuals that may have spitefully used you. Forgive yourself for that situation you put yourself into. Forgive those that don't even know what they've done to you that may have wronged you. Forgive those individuals that have already gone on to be home with the Lord or gone home to be somewhere else. Because when you hold on to that and, you, and there's no possible way for you to get retribution, again, you separate yourself from the blessings of God. Let's get into the text because the Bible says that you've forgiven the iniquity of your people. If even in the Old Testament, pre-salvation, God is already talking about having the iniquity of the people, the sins of the people forgiven, then why are we any different? First, let's break down what iniquity is versus what sin is. Sin is what you have done or plan on doing personally. Iniquity is usually passed down generationally and you'll wonder why people end up saying oh you know my grandmama and them did x y and z and but i'm still struggling with that same issue this is where generational curses come in at because the iniquity of the fathers is passed down to the son until somebody breaks the chain of that iniquity but god has already forgiven it it says you forgave the iniquity of your people now, if we are God's people, if we are called according to his name, if we are in a situation to where we call God our Heavenly Father and we are called his, his blessed children, then we have to operate in that position that we know that our iniquity has already been forgiven, that we know that the sins that we've experienced, the, th the things that we've gotten involved with have already been changed, have already been let go, have already been cast away, have already been sent to the sea of forgetfulness to be remembered no more. We have to recognize that God is already on top of all of that and he's covered all of our sins. Here is a New Testament concept described in the Old Testament. We know without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin, and that Christ died as the ultimate sacrifice for all of our sins. But in the Old Testament, Christ had was not come yet. He was talked about, but he was still the pre-incarnate Christ. He was still the Moshiach yet to come. He was still the Messiah that, that was yet pending, but talked about in prophecy and text. But here's this Old Testament. Here's David talking about that you've covered all of their sins and Selah, Selah, rest. Think on it, dwell on it, recognize where you're at with it. If you begin to look at this, you've covered all of my sins. You've covered all of my big sins, all of my little sins, all of my white lies, all of my black lies. You've caused all of that to be cast away. You have allowed your son Jesus to die for my sin. You have allowed that remission of sin to fall on me as well because now I no longer have to worry about who's going to still hold me accountable. Because here's the thing, you can have operate in a position <clears throat> where people will still try to hold you accountable for who you used to be. People will still press your buttons. People will still have you operating in that sin mindset. I spoke with one of my colleagues today, and I, well, yesterday as a matter of fact, and one of the things he talked about was, man, they almost pushed me back to 20 years ago. Now, here's the thing. No one should have that much power to push you back to a situation that God has brought you out of. 
You allow yourself to get into it. You allow yourself to get angry. You allow yourself to have your buttons to be pushed because you never disarmed your triggers at that particular point in time. But I'm here to tell you today that when Christ came, he came that we would have life and have it more abundantly, that including disarming our trauma triggers that we have based off of the experiences that we've dealt with in our lives. And not only the experiences we've dealt with, also the situations that we have done and all the things that we have experienced at our own hands. See, sometimes the enemy is not somebody from the outside. Sometimes the enemy is the inner me. My thought processes, my mindset, uh, the way I handle my family, the way I handle my finances, my addictions, my proclivities, these things that are contrary to the will and the way of God are the things that prevent me from operating in a forgiven state. So if you are if you are called a child of God, as it says in this particular verse, and please, ma'am, please, sir, I encourage you to read it completely in context. If you're called a child of God and you recognize that God forgave the iniquity of, our, of all of us as his people, and he's covered all of our sins, meaning the shedding of blood has covered all of our sins, then you ought to be able to rest in it. That's why this particular text says, Selah. Selah is a rest point to a song. It's where you take a break and you think about and you pause and you think about the goodness of the Lord because we know the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. We know the Lord is good and his mercy endures throughout all generation. You can rest in knowing that God is in control. You can rest in knowing that everything that you need, everything that you are standing in, in desire of, whether it be a rebalancing of your family, whether it's a rebalancing of your mindset, whether it's your health coming back online, everything that you need rests in the Lord. And I encourage you today, please ma'am, please sir, recognize that as God's people, you have access as joint heirs with Christ to all the same power, all the same forgiveness, all the same healing, all of the things that Christ experienced here on earth as a physical human being. Though he was 100% God, he still had to walk amongst us as humanity. And as he walked amongst us as humanity, he experienced all of the things that we experience. He who knew no sin became sin, became the sacrifice of sin, became wrapped in sin for the ability to have a name that's above every other name. So please, ma'am, please, sir, as you go forward in life, take your time, begin to recognize that God is always in control. Today is Wednesday. I encourage you, read your Bible in context. And this has been your 15 minute fill up. Again, I'm your host, Pastor Derek Galloway, and I'll see you tomorrow morning. Before we go, let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for everything that has gone forward. And now, Jesus, we ask that you bless us during the furtherance of our day. Give us grace, give us peace, give us mercy. Give us what only you can provide. And Father, we'll be ever so careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory that it so richly deserves. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, go ahead and take a look at some of our announcements, and let's make sure that we're connecting in. And again,